Hi, my name is Abby Messner. Um, I'm 18. I had a nerve transplant surgery for my leg to my left eye on November 6, 2012, and now I'm a candidate to have a cornea transplant. I think this technique offers a new alternative for patients with corneal anesthesia. It allows us to offer hope to patients with this condition, and it offers something that's new. It offers a definitive solution to the actual problem. Abby followed the course of many other patients we've seen in that she's, she gradually lost vision as she went along. She developed more and more complications. So without the surgery, um, she would have progressed to legal blindness or even worse without any further treatment. So when I was 11, I came to Sick Kids because I had a brain tumor. Um, I had a 14-hour surgery. I was in the hospital for 12 days, and at the end of it, I injured my cornea. We didn't realize the difficulties that you face when you have a cornea injury and have no nerve function. So, you know, dry eye, um, unstable cornea, risk of infection. Yeah, that um, was the biggest concern, So if, infection. Yeah, and she would have lost her eyesight forever if it had become infected. So, um, you know, <laughs> she healed from the brain surgery and that was kind of an afterthought. We were kind of, wow, we didn't realize that the eye would become the precedent over the years. Yeah. Her brain tumor, <clears throat> excuse me, started growing back um, a year after. Yeah. And she had 33 radiation treatments. And even that, like the radiation treatments, the surgery, the eye yeah. has been the biggest challenge. In this operation, in the event that, let's say, this eye is insensate, what we'll do is make a little incision above this eye over here. And then we find a nerve uh, that provides feeling to this part of the forehead, and then we borrow from it. We borrow a little piece of nerve from the leg, and then we tunnel that nerve across from this incision over across to the affected eye. Then we make a small incision above the affected eye, tunnel that nerve graft over towards the surface of the affected eye, and then under the microscope, we take the nerve graft and then we unpack it. So all nerves have fascicles, so they're little components of nerves. We unpack it into its components, and then we take those components and then direct them around the affected eye. And then Dr. Ali places them right into the cornea, and that's how we do it. The nerve we use for this procedure is called the suro nerve. It runs from the back of the knee to the outside part of the ankle, and we just take a segment of that and run it across the face for the length that we need. It was something more permanent. Like it wasn't something that, like it wasn't a little tiny injection in my eye or like a trisorophy or stitching it because it got really dry. It was like a permanent thing that if this works, then everything changes. Before the surgery, Abby required the contact lens or the, um, uh, the eyes being surgically sewn shut to keep her eye from uh, developing scratches and scarring. So she doesn't require either of those anymore. So she's very happy about that. Uh, she had developed blood vessels in the cornea which kept having to be treated with injections. Those haven't come back yet either. Uh, her vision has improved somewhat. She still has a scar and actually she's going to be moving on to have a corneal transplant to improve her vision. Uh, it's something we would never have considered um, prior to doing this surgery. When I started to regain feeling, I was, I was getting ready for school one morning and I put lac refresh lacquer lube in my eye at night to keep it moist when I, when I go to bed. And so, I'm, so I always get like eye gunk in the corners of my eyes. And so I, I was just doing my hair or whatever. And then all of a sudden I feel like this thing shoot across my right eye. I'm like, what the? So I go to get it and I'm like, there's nothing there. And then I look at my left eye and there's this huge thing of like leftover sleep or eye gunk in my eye. And I'm like, that's weird. Like I felt that in my right, but it happened in my left. So then like kind of teaching myself, wow, that happened to my left eye. So it was like slowly from there, I started to feel it. And that mm -hmm. was only three months after the surgery. Yeah, it came back very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, like it was right where the nerve was. Like I'd feel it from right here and zing over to here. And then I could feel it like tingling in my eye. And it was, it was definitely different, but it was at the same time, it was kind of cool. Cause I'm like, it's working. Mm -hmm. We've been able to find the restoration of sensation in all the um, patients that we've treated in the eyes. This is the biggest medical advance in this area in a long time. So where our hope is, is that uh, over time, this will be the way to go for these children early on in their disease. And we can try to prevent the kind of complications that we see happening to them five or 10 years after diagnosis. I honestly think that the best thing about our procedure here is that we work together so well. 
we understand each other's issues, and we're in an institution that is extremely supportive. We could not have done this in many institutions. Others have looked at doing variants of this technique, but we feel that our uh, innovation um, will really open the door to surgeons worldwide doing this in a, in a very generalizable and accessible way. It's been like little things because of the success of the surgery. She now, you know, I used to be worried about her going out mm -hmm. on a windy day because mm -hmm. you get shrapnel in your eye and she can't feel it and then that creates a scratch or she'll rub and then now she's injured her eye again. So she was sunglasses everywhere. She had sunglasses all the time and, and now I'm confident that you know, she can feel what's in her eye and you know, she's away at university, she's not with me all the time and you know, if she hadn't had the surgery, I think I would have probably moved in with her at university. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we do take little things like that for granted. We think they're little until you live it and then yeah. it becomes everything.